The following is a folk tale from Japan, discovered in F. H. Lee's Folk Tales of All Nations, an absolute treasury of folk tales worldwide. So, a tale entitled Urashima Taro. Many hundreds of years ago, in a village on a craggy sea coast of Japan, there dwelt a fisher lad whose name was Urashima Taro. Of all the fishermen in the village, he was the most skilful with his line and net, and he was also the kindness hearted. If one of his comrades had bad luck, when his own was good, he always shared his catch with him, and he couldn't bear to see any creature, however lowly, tormented or hurt. One fine evening, when Urashima was on his way home to his father's little cottage, he came upon a group of mischievous boys teasing an unlucky tortoise. One boy cast pebbles at its shell, another wrapped it with a stick, and a third tried to poke twigs inside. The sight made Urashima very angry. You cruel children, he said. What evil has the poor thing done to you? Do you not know that unless you put it back into the sea it will die? What then? cried the bad boys. It's only a silly old tortoise. It may die if it pleases. We don't care. Will you not give your tortoise to me? said Urashima. No, we will not, returned the bad boys. It's ours. We want it. Now, Urashima had in his hand a small stock of money, slung on a string through a hole left for that purpose in the centre of each coin. It was his earnings for an entire week, hard won with many hours of patient labour. Listen to me, boys, said Urashima. If you will not give me your tortoise, perhaps you will sell it. And he jingled the string of coins before their eyes. The bad boys hesitated. Think, urged Urashima, what a lot of things you could buy with this money. Much better playthings than a poor tortoise. There is some truth in what Urashima Taro says, remarked the ringleader. Let us take the money and give him the tortoise. So they gave Urashima's little store of coin. They took Urashima's little store of coin and ran off laughing and jumping and the fisher lad was left alone with his purchase. Poor old fellow, said Urashima, stroking the hard, tawny coloured shell. I wonder if it's true that you tortoises live for a thousand years. Perhaps you are still young, and may have nine hundred and ninety years of life before you still. Anyhow, I am going to put you back into the sea, and I advise you, as a friend, not to allow yourself to get caught again. Then Urashima lifted the tortoise in his arms and went down to the beach, and let it slide softly into the water. Next day the lad was early astir. He knew that he'd have to work extra hard in order to make up for the money he'd given the bad boys. All his earnings for a whole week had gone. The sea was as smooth as glass and reflected the lovely turquoise colour of the cloudless sky. Urashima's slender boat drifted rapidly along and soon left the craft of the other fishermen far behind. Presently he heard a soft voice calling him by name. Urashima Taro! Urashima! Urashima stood up in the boat and shaded his eyes with his hand, but there was no human creature in sight. Urashima! called the voice again. It came from the sea, and looking down he saw a tortoise swimming alongside his boat, and he thought it seemed remarkably like the one which he'd befriended the day before. Honourable Mr. Tortoise, said Urashima politely, was it you who called me just now? Yes, replied the tortoise. Do you not remember me? I've come to thank you for your kindness to me yesterday. Oh, that's very good of you, said Urashima. Would you care to come into my boat and bask in the sun for a while? I know that you tortoises love to do that. Many thanks, replied the tortoise, and Urashima helped it to climb aboard. Presently his queer passenger began to talk again. Have you seen the Rinjin, the palace of the Dragon King, Urashima? Urashima shook his head. All we fishermen have heard of that palace, but none of us has ever beheld it. If it would interest you to see it, said the tortoise, I can show you the way thither. It would interest me very much, answered Urashima, but I am only a human being. I couldn't swim anything like as far as you could. Swim, replied the tortoise, but why should you want to swim? I can carry you on my back with ease. Perhaps I'm heavier than you think, hinted the fisher lad. 
who was afraid that if he were to say, you are too small to carry me, he might hurt the feelings of his new friend. Not a bit of it, returned the tortoise, clambering over the edge of the boat and slipping down into the bright water. Try and see. I am larger than you think, Honourable Mr. Urashima. Urashima looked, and it certainly seemed that the tortoise had grown much bigger since it went back into the sea. Come on, urged the tortoise. All right, said Urashima. He climbed upon the tortoise's back, and away the creature swam, carrying him as easily as if he'd been a baby. Honourable Mr. Tortoise, said Urashima presently, I hope you're not going to die, for if you do I shall be drowned. I am going to die, returned the tortoise, but you are not going to be drowned. And down, and down, and down it went through the clear blue water. To his astonishment, Urashima found that he could breathe quite as well under the sea as above it. Fishes, great and small, of a thousand gorgeous colours and quaint forms, swam over his head as birds fly on dry land, and lovely starry anemones and delicately fringed seaweeds grew like flowers on the bed of the sea. Presently, far off, Urashima saw a great gateway, and beyond that the roofs of some magnificent buildings, all glittering with brilliant green and blue tiles. We shall soon be there, remarked the tortoise, swimming faster than ever. A few moments later, the creature halted outside the great gateway, and the porter, who was a large and splendid-looking fish, opened the gate. This is the Honourable Mr. Urashima Taro from the land of Japan, explained the tortoise. He has come to visit the Rinjin, the palace of the Dragon King of the Sea. He is very welcome, said the fish. Urashima now descended from the tortoise's back, and the fish floating slowly before him, led the way into the palace. No words could possibly describe the beauty of that great palace in the depths of the sea. It was built of green and blue jewels of coral and beryl and sapphire and pearl, and around it were wide gardens which reminded Urashima of the gardens of his own Japan. For maples and firs and plum trees and cherry trees grew there, and wisteria climbed over the arches, and little bridges of red lacquer spanned tiny torrents of foaming grey water. In the eastern part of the garden it was always spring, and fruit trees were gay with unfaded blossom. To the south was perpetual summer. To the west lay the autumn garden, where the maples were ruddy golden, and the chrysanthemums shone like fire. To the north was the realm of winter, and there the fir trees were white with snow, and the torrents under the little bridges were frozen into long icicles as they fell. All these marvels and glories took Urashima's breath away, but there remained one far beyond all the rest, and that was the lady Otohime, the daughter of the Dragon King of the Sea. When she approached Urashima, he fell on his knees and bowed his head upon the sand, for never had he dreamt of any being being so beautiful. Her robes were of green silk, shot through with threads of silver and gold, and her long, fine black hair hung like a great mantle upon her shoulders. Welcome and greeting, Urashima Taro, said the lady, Otohime. Most humbly do I thank you, your honourable ladyship, stammered Urashima, not daring to raise his head. It is I who must thank you, Urashima Taro, returned the lady, Otohime. Listen, and you shall learn why. Once a year, as we immortals reckon years, it is the will of my father, the Dragon King of the Sea, that I should assume the form of a sea creature and allow myself to be caught by some mortal's net or snare. If that mortal be merciful, great is his reward. But if he be cruel, his punishment also be great. Urashima Taro, arise. Fear nothing, my friend. I was that tortoise whom you delivered from the hands of the cruel children, who would have me suffer much pain. So Urashima arose, and he and the Lady Otohime went forth into the garden where it was always spring. The fish servants brought them rice and sake and cups of pearl, and fish minstrels made music for them under the blossoming trees. Urashima found favour in the eyes of the Lady Otohime. She sought leave of her father, the Dragon King of the Sea, to take the fisher lad for her husband. And so they were married, and even in Rinjin, the sea palace of many marvels, such rejoicings were never known as the rejoicings at the wedding of Urashima Taro 
and the beautiful daughter of the Dragon King. Urashima was very happy with his royal bride in the depths of the sea, and for a long time he forgot all about his father and his mother and his old home on the craggy coast of Japan. And then one day, the Lady Otohime noticed that her husband was looking thoughtful and sad. What ails you, Urashima Taro, she said. I just remembered, said Urashima, that far away in the land of mortals, from whence I come, I have a father and a mother, and they are old. Unless I make haste, perchance I may never see them again. Surely they have wept for me, thinking that I have left them, never to return. Alas, Surishima, cried the Lady Otohime, have you ceased to love me? Are you no longer happy in the Rinjin? No, said Urashima sorrowfully, I have not ceased to love you, Honourable Ladyship. But I cannot be happy until I have beheld my mother and father again. I am ashamed that I should have forgotten them for so long. Let me go to them, even if it be for one day, and then I will return. Then the lady, Otohime, wept bitter tears. If you wish to depart, she told him, I cannot keep you here. Go then, but take with you this casket, lest I, too, should be forgotten. And with these words she placed in Urashima's hands a little box of golden lacquer, tied tightly with a cord and a tassel of scarlet silk. This casket, said the Lady Otohime, holds something very precious and very rare. Take it with you, my husband, wherever you go. But remember, you must not open it, for if you do, great evil will befall you. Urashima Taro promised that nothing would ever persuade him to open the golden lacquer box. He bade farewell very sadly to the Lady Otohime, cast a last regretful glance at the gardens of the Four Seasons, and then went down to the great gateway at which he had arrived and where he found a tortoise, waiting for him to bear him whence he had come. The tortoise swam steadily on and on, till at last the blue peaks of Japan arose upon the horizon. Urashima's heart began to beat faster. He recognised the coastline, the fir woods and the craggy shore. Soon he would see his old home again, and kneel down before his father and mother, imploring their forgiveness. He jumped off the tortoise's back in his impatience and waded ashore. Coming towards him was an aged man whom he took to be his father. A moment later Urashima realised his mistake and then he ran in the direction where his father's house had stood. What a change! The little hut had vanished and a much larger house with purple iris flowers growing between the roof tiles occupied its place. Surely my family has grown rich in my absence, thought Urashima. A man came out of the house, and Urashima approached him politely. Honourable sir, can you tell me whether the parents of Urashima Tara, the fisherman, still live in this house? The man stared at him in amazement. Who may you be, Mr. Stranger? he asked. I'm Urashima Taro. The man burst out laughing at this. You? <laughs> Why, he's been dead for almost three hundred years, Urashima Taro. Pardon me, said Urashima. I am he. I've been absent for some time. I don't know exactly how long. Perhaps one year, perhaps two. But I've returned because I'm anxious to see my aged parents again before they die. If you are really Urashima Taro, you've arrived three hundred years too late, returned the man. Why, the house where he lived was pulled down in my great-grandfather's time. And even then, it was many years since the fisher lad vanished one fine morning. Either you are joking, or you are a ghost. I am no ghost, cried Urashima, stamping on the ground. You know that ghosts have no feet. I am as much alive as you are. I am Urashima Taro. Urashima Taro lived three hundred years ago, retorted the man. It's all written in the village records, which are kept in the temple. Why do you repeat such a foolish jest? Feeling sick with fear and disappointment, Urashima continued to walk along the seashore. At every step he saw changes which showed only too plainly that the man had spoken truly, and that not one year, or two, but three centuries had come and gone since he last beheld the place. Every one whom I knew and loved in the land of the mortals has long been dead, thought Urashima sadly. Why should I tarry here? I must go back as quickly as I can to the beautiful land of the immortals, and to my life, wife, the Lady Otohime. He walked down to the edge of the sea, and gazed anxiously across the waves. 
The tortoise which had brought him from Rinjin had vanished. How was he to find his way back to the realm of the Dragon King again? Urashima sat on a rock and buried his head in his hands. What could he do? He was alone in a strange and unfriendly world, and his only possession was the golden lacquer casket, which he had promised that he would not open. He took it on his knee and looked wistfully at the scarlet cords which had been knotted by the hands of the Lady Otohime. Surely, he said to himself, if I break my vow, she will forgive me. Surely if I untie these cords and open the lid, I shall find something that will tell me how to win my way back to her again. So Urashima set the casket upon the ground and untied the scarlet cords and lifted the lid. The casket was empty, only there seemed to waft from it a pale purple cloud which hovered over his head for a while and then rose into the air and floated away across the sea. Till that moment, Urashima had looked just as he did when he left Japan 300 years ago. A strong, dark-haired, well-built lad of 21. But as he stood, watching the purple cloud fading and receding, a great change came over him. His bright eyes grew dim, his black locks turned white, his sturdy limbs became suddenly withered and bent, and then, with a cry of despair, he fell on his knees with his face against the ground. Next morning, some fishermen going down to the sea with their nets found an aged man lying dead beside a casket of golden lacquer. They peeped into the casket, but there was nothing inside. Is this the same man who spoke to you yesterday? One of the fishermen asked the other. Oh no, said his comrade. He was a sturdy young fellow who tried to make me believe that he was Urashi Mataro. Well... What a story. Anyway, more stories to come. Hope you enjoy it.